Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, we just had some talk about uh, cool user interfaces. Now I'm going to talk about boring user interfaces. Yeah. <laughs> business! Hey! Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to talk about business, but I'm going to talk about boring user interfaces, and that's okay. Boring interfaces are cool also. You also need them. Actually, I built a couple. Okay. So, my name is Johan. I am um, originally from Belgium, but now I work in the University of Chile. Um, I did not implement this. So, why am I here? Um, it's a long story. Basically, I was interested because I wanted to have something like this because of my research, etc. etc. This was implemented by Ben with close supervision by Steph. Um, and at some point, they needed to work on the documentation efforts. I wanted to learn about this, so I said, okay, let me help. Let me help in documenting. And that's why we wrote um, some documentation. And then Steph asked me to present, so okay. <laughs> so, so, okay. Boring stuff. Yeah, okay, so what am I talking about when, when, when I want to talk about spec? What's the kind of user interfaces that you're going to build when you're going to use spec? Um, let's show some examples. So you see the kind of user interfaces that, we, that I'm talking about, right? This just standard widgets, buttons, lists, uh, little menus, you know, boring user interfaces. But we need them anyway, right? We need to write stuff like this, we need to use stuff like this all of the time, okay? So, of all of this, three I wrote myself. All of the rest is already in, in the image. So I opened the file for image the day before yesterday and I started taking screenshots. So all of this is in there. So it's already used and you can use it lots of times. Before I want to talk about how to build stuff in spec, I first want to talk a bit about a fundamental keystone of spec. And the fundamental keystone of spec is reuse. Spec was built keeping in mind fundamentally that we should be able to reuse. We should be able to reuse user interfaces. How is this done? Every widget that you have in your user interface, every widget is already a complete user interface, and every user interface that you make can be reused as a widget. A widget is a full user interface, and a user interface that you build can be reused as a widget. Standard. What do I mean? Let's make a stupid example. A drop list. You know, you click on this, the list opens. How do you make a drop list? This is how you instantiate one. Inspect. This is how you can set the items. So this is my full affiliation. And then you have a widget. But actually this widget is a full user interface. So if I send it open with spec, I have a window with a full user interface. It doesn't do anything but it's a full user interface. Every widget, send it open with spec, you can complete user interface. The other way around, this is one that I built for my research. This is a full user interface, but what do I do? New, same message, open with spec. And when I do that, I get something like this. We'll talk a bit more about that later. Every widget is a full user interface, every full user interface is a widget. Which means that every user interface that you're going to build, by default, it's reusable. Okay? This means when you build a user interface, somebody else can take it, reuse it, integrate it in something else. So when I am building a user interface, or when I am reusing an interface, it's important to know how to configure it. Here I make this example with this drop list model. 
and I send it the items message to be able to set the items in the drop list. Okay. How do I, as somebody who reuses an existing widget or user interface, know what are the methods that I can use to configure it? How did I find out that it's the items message? Okay, yeah, by the name it makes sense that it should be items, but we have to be a bit more structured like that. We need to know how we can configure this kind of stuff. So there is a standard way of doing things, which is to put the public API of how you configure a widget in protocol and protocol events. Now, if you have a look at all the standard widgets, which are inside of spec, which is much more than this, you will see they have this classified, and all of these methods are documented. So if you want to build a user interface in spec and you want to reuse a widget <coughs> and you don't know how to use it, you look there, you look at the methods, the methods are documented. I think this is fundamental for you to know because the documentation can become out of date with the implementation, but the implementation is the implementation. So you can always look there to get the most up-to-date information. Okay. End of philosophy. For now. Let's build a user interface. That's what we're here for. Let's build this user interface. Now this user interface is too big. Let's build this user interface. So what's this? This is actually the user interface for a work that I'm doing together with a PhD student. So the point of this research is to build a language for robots. There will be a demo this afternoon. And the point of the language, the user interface is important, but I don't want to spend all my time on the user interface. We want to talk about the language, we want to talk about presentation, etc. Et so we use spec to build a user interface for the entire ID. So the entire ID for my programming language is built using spec. Okay. So what is this? This is basically a text editor. Okay. It's a text editor with some special buttons. If I click here, it's going to insert pieces of text. There is an interpreter behind because it's a language and with these buttons I can control the interpreter. I can stop it, I can set it, I can step it, etc. Et okay. How do I build a user interface? What's the first step? The first step is defining the class. If you build the user interface in spec, you have to subclass composable model. Number one. So this means if you want to look for an example find all the subclasses of composable models, you find all the spec user interfaces in your image. Second step, you need to define instance variables for each widget in your user interface. So if I go back, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. That's those 10 guys here. I know the name of the instance variables is bad. I looked at it the day before yesterday, I refactored it yesterday, now it's better. I didn't take a screenshot. Okay. So you need to have instance variables for each of the widgets which is going to be inside of your user interface, and you need to generate the accesses for that. First of all. Then we can start putting widgets into our user interface. Okay. So, you need to know three things about widgets. First of all, Widgets are selfish. Second of all, widgets are also cooperative. And third of all, widgets, they know their place in widget society. This means you're going to have to do three, three things when you build your user interface. You're going to take care about the selfishness, you're going to take care about the cooperation, and you're going to take care about their place in society. Three different levels. So what do I mean when I say that widgets are selfish? Widgets care about themselves. I am a button, what is my label? I am a label, what is my label? I am a button, somebody clicks on me, what do I do? Me, selfish. Well, where do you put all of this selfish stuff? You put it in a method which is called initialize widgets. What are you going to do in the method initialize widgets? You are first going to define the different widgets put any identity crisis here. Huh? This guy is a button, you button. I configure it, 
the label of this is inspect the bot. And the action that I do is when I click on this, that piece of code gets executed. Okay? So spec as standard in the composable model class has a number of methods which can instantiate for you all of the standard stuff. Okay, buttons, labels, drop downs, I don't know what. But you can make a morph, which in this case, in my case is a text editor. You can send it as spec adapter, and then this morph can be part of your spec user interface. Okay? So instantiation, configuration of myself. Selfishness. But widgets do not live alone. Widgets live together in a user interface. And sometimes they are linked. When I click on my step button of my interpreter, actually what I want is I want the pause button to be highlighted. So buttons, they work together. They do stuff together. All the parts of the user interface, they work together. So this stuff where you have a link between different widgets in your user interface, you put this in the second method. Initialize result. So for example, when I click on the step button, actually what is going to happen, the pause button is going to be true. The pause button, it was a radio box, it's going to become true. When I click on the reset button, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen, and if the pause was true, we'll set the pause to false, etc. Et so this is the part where the different widgets influence each other, influence the presentation, influence the together, cooperation. Widgets know their place in widget society. It's very classic to know your place in society. This is why it's a class message. It's a stupid joke, I know, but now you will remember. This is a class site. At class site you have a message. Actually, the name of the message is not so important. What's important is that you put a program. So the interpreter knows where to recuperate this. What are you going to do? In there you're going to define your layout. So, defining a layout, it's actually really complicated. There are so many different ways in which you want to put widgets with the centering, the left, the top, the right, the bottom, it has to be proportional between an offset, etc, etc. So this is very complicated and I'm not going to talk about everything because we don't have enough time. And it's clear that there's stuff missing in spec that it would be, bad, would be nice that we could have, but I didn't do anything, so it's my fault. Uh, so I'm just going to focus on this example. Okay? What you can do is, you can work with columns, and inside of the columns, you can add rows. This works for a lot of things. If you want to do more exotic stuff, it's going to break, but it works for a lot of things. So what am I saying here? I make a layout. The layout is one column. It's got one row. It's got a piece of text in the middle, and it's got one row at the bottom. The row on the top, going to have a standard height, height of the toolbar, and then I'm going to add all of these buttons. Notice that I'm using symbols here, I'm not using the buttons themselves. So this is actually interpreted, it's a long story. You use the symbols. So when you make a row, you can set the height. When you make a row, you can set the height. For a column, you can set the width. That's it, that's it. and we have our user interface. Fundamentally, that's really all that we need to do. Define the class, say, uh, have the instance variable for the widgets with their accessors, and then three things. Initialize widgets, initialize presenter, and then the layout. And with that, we can have our user interface. <coughs> but I'm not finished. When I started this talk, I said that something was fundamental for spec. What is the fundamental building block of spec? What do we want to do? Reuse. <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm going to reuse my user interface. I'm going to reuse this guy to make this guy. Because this
this thing is the thing that we built. And then we can build all of this and just put it together. The first time anybody felt doing my computer. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so when I make a widget, by default it's reusable. But what I can do, I can help people that want to reuse it. How do I help it? I define a public API for it. This text widget is only going to work really if it has a link to the interpreter because it's front end for the interpreter. So I can't do it. Go change this block. Actually, I don't remember what it was. It's too long. So, okay, let's make the big ID. We make a composable subclass of the user interface. It's got two parts the code and the visualization. That's it. Generate the accessors for that. Then, there are three things that we need to take into account when you think about widgets widgets are selfish, widgets are cooperative, widgets are not their place in society. This is all that I need to do. Left hand side, right hand side, and set some. Um, let the visualization pane know the code pane. So these two widgets that I made, this is the one I made earlier. This is the one which I'm going to show in detail. These are not standard widget, cl widget classes we did in spec, so I cannot say new LRP program editor. What I need to do, self instantiate the name of the class. And then the magic happens. So, selfish. With this, both widgets know what they are, they are configured right. Cooperative. Actually, these widgets are not cooperative. My left hand side, when I click on something, nothing's going to happen in the right hand side. I want something to happen to the right hand side, nothing's going to happen in the left hand side. So, I have no initialized presenter. That's okay. That's okay. You can have user interfaces where every widget is self-contained and you click on something and nothing happens anywhere else. No problem. Widgets know their place in society. I have a column. I have a row where I have my text. And I have a row where I have my visualization pane. Done. I built my user interface was easy because I could reuse the text pane, I could reuse the visualization pane, put them together. Okay. So, what do I want you to remember from this talk? First of all, reuse. You make a user interface, it can be reused. So if you want it to be reused, make the API button. Spec works well because it's easy to reuse stuff. And you reuse a default widget or you re so reuse somebody else's user interface, it doesn't matter. You can just reuse it. So, if you want to reuse something, in this case I want to reuse a drop list model, how do I know to, how to configure it? I know how to configure it because all of the stuff for configuration is here, here, and protocol other guys. Anything that starts with protocol. Uh, and if it's a default spec stuff, it's going to have documentation. If you build it, it's your own responsibility to provide documentation. So if you want to reuse something, you look here for the documentation. What's the stuff that it implements? That's it. That's it. Widgets are selfish. Widgets are cooperative. Widgets know their place in society. One method, you initialize the widget, you set its label, etc., etc. Second method, whenever they work together, you put it initialize presenter. Third one, the layout. Where are the widgets on the screen? And there are a lot of examples in the image. Questions? I have a question. <coughs> Are there some plans on uh, porting spec to web? So you could write an application, desktop application, and run it on the on the web. I don't know. 
there and there was there when they were. So, so the, 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 current, the current plan, this is, we want to clean the API because the API are two variables. So this means that basically what uh, Johan shows is that when you have a variable to point to your widget, it's, it's at, it's, it is acting like a port. And now the problem is that you have sometimes you have far too many methods that just wrap this port. While if what you want, you want to say, oh, I want to register to this to this port, and I want to get notified when there is something. So we want to clean these things and make the tutorial working well. So for the web. Our resources. If somebody does it, we would be happy, but we have to. Yeah, it's complicated. Find eh? <laughs> something uh, for the web translating is to. One of the ideas was to use, uh, if Esteban delivers uh, marks, is that you could, for example, get native uh, Cocoa widget. Because we, we could do that. This is one of the purpose of. Uh, it could happen, eventually, after the human kind arrives to Mars. <laughs> so encouraging. <laughs> but, but, so, you know, I was discussing with Andre because he told me that he does not like all these layers and interpretation and things like that. The requirement of spec is that it should not be bound to morph. So this means that the logic, that we can reuse the logic. Now what we want also to understand, this is um, if you look into the original design in uh, Dolphin, Smalltalk, or VisualWorks, they use um, events or um, dependency transformer in VisualWorks. And the idea is that in spec we use uh, the value holder is using announcement. And this means that we have one announcement per variable, which does not make sense. So this means that we are thinking maybe the comp the composite model, the application model, should be the guy that holds the announcer, so we should revise these kinds of things. And maybe if a slot tomorrow uh, can solve this, this issue nicely, we will migrate to slot. So, so this is more in that direction. What we would like, I would really like to, we will synchronize with uh, Johan, but I would like to have a kind of little booklet, because we have several chapters, and probably also with uh, Stefan, because he wrote something on dynamic spec that was never integrated into the doc. So we would like to rethink a bit that. And if we do that this year, we will be really happy. So they're talking about dynamic stuff. There, there is a way to do dynamic stuff in spec. You can change the layout of your existing user interface. You can add widgets. You can remove widgets while it's running. But due to time constraints, it's not here. Um, so what we have in text that we're, we're going to put in the booklet, it's already online and it contains a lot of information, much more than just simply what I said here. You can also have a look at that. Cool. Any more questions? Yes. So, uh, on the mailing list there are quite some questions about like uh, changing colors and fonts and alignment and blah blah blah. And yeah. maybe that's something that's not really the purpose of spec, it's more like abstract or... But I don't know, so talking about alignment, yeah, there was... Um, I forgot whose name it was. Some, somebody who asked that he wanted to have his, uh, his label instead, by default, if you, if you put it in, uh, in wheel now, it's going to be left aligned and you want to be center aligned. You know, that, that, that's a layout issue, as I said before. All of this stuff of, of laying out is really, really very complicated. Yeah, it's very white. And yeah. You cannot do everything. But, but wait, for the color, for example, what is. I think that we are missing the, 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 the support for the properties. And this is something that is part of how to improve. I think that this, you, you have to be able to specify that you want to have the color and that the, the, the domain logic can control the color of the widget. Like, uh, okay, you didn't enter well your validation stuff, it should be in red, boom. So it should be part. This is just that these little properties, they were forgotten. Yeah, but really the feeling the issue is that um, the low-level setting of color uh, are overridden by the theming, and if you override it, it will just override it again, instead of using it just as default and telling you that if you set it by hand, then you are on your own. I was not even at this level, I was really yeah. at the level of, well, at 
do a bit of spinning. Yeah, but the, the influence of theming is of course important eh, because if you do manual changes in the layout and the colors, and then it won't match when you switch the theme. So maybe it's better not to specify and to leave it to the theme. But uh, no, if you, spe I mean, you can you can specify a normal color and a warning color, yeah. and, and then Abstract. the theme defines uh, what it's going to going to be like. Same with the background color and the foreground color. Right now, um, so inside the system, it's it works with Morphic, but it's not strongly coupled with Morphic. The idea was also to be able to have different backends, right? So um, if, if you have this support at the level of the backend, actually what you need to do is you need to expose this as a public API of your widgets, and then you could have your label widgets that would have uh, another method that says a warning color, I don't know what. Fundamentally, in all of this construction that I showed you, there is nothing really that's going to change. What, what you need is the implementation support below is going to be able to realize that. Mm -hmm. um, I find that using spec reduces the explorability of the system. So, we can reuse part, but it's not like with morphs, when we can put the halo and get in there and make it everything because the spec has a big array. It's yeah. really a nightmare to yeah. find out what's going on. So what, well, yeah, so what you actually want to do when you, when you want to figure out how it works, you really want to go and find the, the composable model subclass for your user interface, and you look at the source code there, and you could put the self-halt there, yeah. for example. For, for the user interface that I built, I never bring up the halos or, or do it that way. I just go to the composable model, and there, look at the source code, to halt wherever I need to do it and run it and see what happens. So then when you go in your source code and you get into the polymorph widgets, which are made in all kinds of ways and all kinds of protocols, ah, then you are dead. Not my problem. Yeah. So not my problem. Yeah. Is there a plan to have a couple of base widgets which are like Give me five million euro, I have plenty of plans. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about that during the consortium meeting. I can tell you I can tell you, you know, we talk about this morning I talk about the, the autobus versus the jet. You know? Mm -hmm. I dream about a jet, I have an autobus. You know, you imagine my frustration? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I, we have plans. This is we, we are not you know we are not blind on the status of the system. This is just I mean, a, a, a trivial thing for example is that, that the polymorph package is actually not a package, it's just a big hack on top of morphic. So yes, yes. that that needs to be done is to just merge it first into the into the morphic package. And, and afterwards clean it up. And we started to do that, but you have to take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's complex. This yeah. Yeah. And it needs to be done with care because you uh, remove something which you think nobody ever used, and then people will yell at you that you changed something. And, uh, we will get there. Yeah, and something about uh, we say no data stuff. And I think some of the aspects of discovery problems so could be solved with tools that are true to uh, the entities of spec. And that allow for. Um, Correct debugging through the interpreter and resolve things uh, in space in the structure of programming and resolve the things. Yeah, but you see so, things so like GLM layout brick and so on, it's uh, yet another layout thing system. Yeah, exactly. And it's hard, it's hard to check. Uh, wait. So, yeah. we have a new implementation of the interpreter. We will probably push this interpreter in Faro 5 because the first implementation of the interpreter was never something that we like. We always say to the original developer, but so in the future we will write a good interpreter. It will be already help a bit. Okay, thanks, Johan, for your presentation. Pleasure. I forgot to give that during the GT demo uh, presentation. This is a gift for Doru because he cannot find in Switzerland a uh, reglisse. Huh? So I was shopping and...